Welcome to Dow Deep Dives, where we interview Dow founders, core Dow contributors, and everyone else who works on the periphery of decentralized autonomous organizations. Hello, hello, my fine gentlemen. Another episode of Dow Deep Dives. I am very excited today. I say that every time, but I always am very excited. Today we're talking to Angelo from Build. I believe you just call yourself Build, right? Even though that's one of the earlier questions we'll get yeah. to here in a second. Yeah. So welcome. How's good, everything? Good. I'm glad we got to do this on on having met yesterday and knowing someone else from TechStars Network and jumping on the show today to have just an extended conversation on stuff we were talking about. So really appreciate you having me on the pod. So just get right to it then. Who are you and how do you relate professionally sure. to the space? Yeah. I just view myself as like a humble servant of our own DAO that I'm like drawing the most on right now. And then ideally I go back in the background, but but yeah, more formally, my name's Angelo, grew up in San Diego, was in the army for four years, moved to New York. I don't even know what a startup was. And then, uh, but quickly got the bug really on two, two kind of pivotal things. Like one, hey, it's really cool that you could take any given interest in the world and build a startup out of it. I just thought that was fascinating once I discovered that's what it was. And then two... I think you're always making decisions off of incomplete data, which is something that I, I think learned a lot from the army. And so I felt most comfortable in that space. And uh, yeah, hit the ground running when I got here, worked at a mainly product and growth roles. I did a, a YC HR tech startup where we're doing basically like LinkedIn for hospitality workers. Then the last one was the first hire leading product and growth. We built an AI chatbot. I joke that it was like an AI Karen to get bank fees back for overdrafts and insufficient funds charges. So we were, yeah, using AI to fight banks to get money back for folks. And that was cool. We ended up exiting that one. And then, and then, yeah, here I am today. I've been working on as the founder, so to speak, but again, core contributor, I guess, of Build, Build Cities. And we are, and I've been working on this for about a year and a half now started with just a white paper and a logo and a brand and then has evolved into this kind of full scale digital infrastructure as well as a network of partners that are putting together this full stack of what we're doing which is really in short a protocol for startup cities but that's the one liner but more in depth it's really infrastructure to seed and scale startup ecosystems anywhere around the world and uh, happy to get into more like what that means, but uh, I'll pause there, see if there's any, yeah, follow ons for now. Yeah. Thank you. Before we go any deeper into that, actually the standard question we like to ask all our guests is what is a DAO? And you are free to answer that however you like. I think it's extremely fluid and evolving, but the latest one that I've, I think is most thematically stuck with me is it's like a supercharged co-op in a way, right? Or co-op with like different new primitives that you have at our disposal that in organizational structures we did not have before. And a lot of, there's just a, definitely a lot of R&D in the space broadly of just like, how do these get used? What are they good for? How should we apply them? Historically, I definitely think of DAOs as like the technological extension of a co-op structure. So you can look at probably one of the more formidable co-ops of our time was like Mondragon. It's, it was based out of Spain, but there's also one stateside, REI is a co-op, the Green Bay Packers are a co-op. And yeah, so I think a DAO is a tech-enabled or supercharged co-op essentially. Cool. Yeah pretty accurate, I think, easy to understand for listeners who are maybe new to it. So Build Cities, lots to unpack. I want to start a little different today because looking at your website, you need to look at it just to really get what I'm talking about here now. But what stuck out to me right away was how you branded. And you mentioned that you started with the brand actually in the early days, how you branded it, right? Which is Build underscore and Cities in parentheses. Tell us about that decision and what that means to, you know, what Build Cities is. Yeah, I'll tell just personally, there's two kind of personal motivators for me for why I put these things together. One being the distribution of like risk capital and seed stage capital, like getting it out of ecosystems, like not necessarily getting it out of, but hey, let's put the venture into VC. Like how do we create an experience where anyone in the world 
can be building their idea and never have to feel like they need to go migrate to Silicon Valley to like get funding and then get their idea off the ground, right? That's the end user experience. You can be in Taos, New Mexico, Peru, wherever, right? GDP of the internet doesn't have latitude, longitude coordinates. That's always been a personal motivator. And then the other piece going with the brand of build is the, I guess, probably like the highest or actually like atomic unit brand of it. You know, you can insert anything after the underscore, build Taos, build, build ventures, build hardware, whatever. For me, it's always been, I've always had this little bit of struggle between how do you balance work-life balance, right? What does that look like? For me, it was like a fundamental tension. And then in creating this, I realized like building things, whatever it is, has always been the intersection of both of those where it doesn't feel like I'm getting up in the morning to go to work. And at the same time, it's something that I feel that I've been able to sharpen the skill set enough where I can also make an economic opportunity for myself. And so I think that's really, it's always been the prerequisite of great companies, great anything else. Like you have to like create the thing, like prototype the thing. That's where that came from. And then as far as a broader brand, when you insert any city underneath that, it's really pulling on those two main identities, right? So one being as somebody who identifies as a builder, creator, there's a number of variants of words that you can put in there. And that's a really strong piece of somebody's identity. I think that gets typically formulated early on or later on in life, but either way, it becomes a core piece of somebody's, I think, identity. And then the city piece after is the other pole where we want people to be like, we want to attract the builders who are proud of their city. I live in Jersey City. I'm proud of the city. I want to always be perpetually building it. I may not live here forever, but I'm going to move to cities that I want to feel proud about, right? I think that kind of dovetails into we need to be vested in our communities again, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's where it started. Yeah, that's a great overview. And you even alluded to the mission already. So from there, we can double click and dive into that. The mission is to unlock the hidden GDP in communities around the globe. So, you know, for me, the word that stands out there is hidden. And so I'd just love to learn a little bit more about that. Yeah. And if you can lay that out for our listeners, what that really means. Yeah. Yeah. So the way we view equity or hidden equity, hidden GDP locked today is, you know, proximity, politics, or perception, right? You, you may not be close to the resources that a, a startup city or startup community has like Silicon Valley, but now we can transform over the internet with crypto, right? We can create value literally with our laptops and reinvest that capital into bits, real estate, whatever. So that wall is already broken, right? And then there's politics, right? If you're in an area that for most of the world, it's very difficult to actually physically access those ecosystems in the first place. But now we teleport over Zoom, right? I haven't met you guys personally, but now we're chatting as if we were about to go have a beer or whatnot, right? We can coordinate that way. And that perception of like pedigree. I've been working, I've gone to several hackathons this year and whatnot, and have met many instances where I'm meeting these people who are just like extremely talented, extremely skilled, but have zero pedigree whatsoever, right? And they might not get hired by Google or whatever startup, et cetera, just because they just don't have that pedigree. But I think we're in an era now where Git repos don't lie. Great design, people can recognize. Dribble portfolio, people can recognize, hey, this skill is very apparent here. It doesn't matter what their resume is. And uh, yeah, and then I think that kind of draws to our network of contributors that have been working on Build already. They're spread all over the world. We have a large part of our development efforts in Lagos design team in Belgrade. We've had people just all over the place that may not have had opportunities that, that typically afforded those more mature ecosystems. So yeah, so that's like the mission behind what we want to equalize or create some kind of equilibrium for almost like a meritocracy. Yeah. You started on public beta with 50 cities. Uh, what? I'll be the first to admit, I think that might've been a mistake. It's too many to start. <laughs> And so we're wrestling with like, how do we make sure everything is aligned but now, but like we made it. So it's like anybody could have applied early on. We were just a discord. Hey, what city do you want to, I didn't even know that it was going to be a map or like th this was the final interface. I just like torchbearer who had some interest that would claim these, like we had these collection of one city NFTs. And again, that's just like the first 
again, just lighting the candle of just spark that, okay, somebody's here. That's good. They've obviously found us somehow and they're aligned and they've completed the small amount of work to get these. And then, so it just made sense to just have those 50 on the map that we have now, but to keep the whole thing moving forward, basically we've, we're still in the process of solidifying, okay, what does it mean to be a city chapter? And really the underlying philosophy now is the more activity that we see in any given ecosystem, that's where we'll start dedicating more of like the full stack resources that we have uh, through our partners and through our own internal teams. So 50 was a lot to start, but we'll, we're gonna make it work. Right now, it's just a directory on the web app. And then we got a lot of pretty exciting releases coming up that'll enable those more. Yeah, so that's exactly where I wanted to go. You mentioned a city chapter, defining what that is. Give us a little bit more insight into that. This is a two-parter, actually. So what is a city chapter? And if someone wanted to start, say, build Albuquerque as a new chapter, which isn't currently on the map, what does that mean? Who should they be? What should they bring? What should they expect? So right now, as it stands today, it's just the cities that are on the map that have this overlay. So what we've done is built this platform. You can check it out today, buildcities.network, log in. As long as you have a Discord, you can log in. And basically what we're getting at is we have people surface their, their servers and the onboarding, and then they pick their top three. So it's basically, hey... I'm saying like, these are my top three digital tribes, right? These are like my digital alliances that I have. And then they pick their top three cities that they're a part of. And then we basically overlay those. So really today is it's more or less like a directory. Of, hey, I want to find one of the chap you mentioned, Solve you're in Miami. You can go in there and see, hey, I want to go find where the crypto punks are in Miami for at least anybody who's logged in and, and came from the crypto punks community. And so really that's like the premise for every piece of the roadmap is like network, network cross with city. So like we met in Constellation Dell as that expands and it grows, I could be, go to Barcelona and be like, oh, where's all the Constellation Dell folks so I can meet them. And so really that's just like the, this first big release that we have is just almost like this discoverability layer of people's existing, pre-existing networks, unrelated, independent of build. We very much view ourselves as infrastructure layer, but they'd be able to find, find their own digital tribes in their own cities. And what this means for what a city chapter is that eventually each city in there will be its own DAO. And it will be a, we're calling them like ecosystem funds or DAO ecosystem fund. Or there's a lot of legal stuff that we don't have to get into on this pod, but basically, and we're still defining what the attributes are, but say, for example, there's X number of meetups in the city, Y number of, of people in there, Z number of projects. And these are all would be phased in the roadmap. So it'd be very clear what you had to do to accomplish that. And then we can enable that kind of more so like financial slash governance piece of those city chapters so that each city ends up being its own DAO. Fascinating. Obviously, now you're starting to speak <laughs> that language here. Now, we talk a lot about physical cities here. You mentioned networks and the overlap of those, right? You mentioned earlier, that, like you select your service, right? Your Discord servers, your Discord communities yeah. you're a part of. I have played with the app a little bit. I think that's already such a cool feature, right? Is there also the concept or maybe in the future, are you thinking about a concept of like remote cities, right? Because I think a lot of us are remote first now, or digital yeah. nomads, whatever you want to call it. Absolutely. And like when we think of the user experience, the same feeling that you would have going over to a neighbor that you really get along with, like down the street, like it would be the same feeling that it was a neighbor across the world and you were just responsible for the airline ticket, right? And it would literally feel the same. That's definitely baked into the product and we're thinking of more things to kind of add on to replicate that. And right now, Discord serves as a good MVP. It's like an intermediary. And I think all communities, that's why we built the app on Discord because we're just operating under the faith that people are building their communities already, how they see best see fit. And we're just creating this cross-pollination layer where people can, again, hey, I want to, I haven't seen this DAO yet. Let me go see who's in that city in this DAO. So we think of the, when we're th talking about kind of decentralizing Silicon Valley, for lack of a better analogy, I think it's a common one, but uh, what if we could recreate that alchemy 
that Silicon Valley has, it has birthed all these great ventures and yes, distribute it through the internet. And I think we have all the tools that are happening to make this today. Zoom, we're on Google Meets. Like I've, even my personal experience, like in like selfishly building this for myself, like I can say it's been nice to be able to actually have new connections, new friends that you pick up the same very high signal conversations that you may have had over Zoom for about six months. And then you're on ground. It's like you both happen to be in the same area. And so, oh, cool. Let's go grab dinner. And you're just picking up where you left off. Short answer to your question is yes, absolutely. And we just, we're almost baking that into the, to the software layer as, as we grow. Yeah. So let's paint a more comprehensive picture for the listeners. Give us the vision pitch. Like what is phase two to four all yeah. about? Yeah. So with that premise that we're talking about with these connections of, of this crossover of digital networks and physical cities. Post, post COVID, I'll touch on the internet like tribes, so to speak. You can look at every DAO is an internet tribe, right? Discord servers are internet tribes. Even, and you're seeing more of the platforms like Twitter just released their communities. WhatsApp just released their communities. Like people are having these common tribes over the internet that are, again, and a lot to credit to Bology's thesis and the network state is like more people have a stronger connection with that tribe, whether that's on an axis of religion, political beliefs, industry, whatever, stronger alliances to those than necessarily sometimes they do have in their local neighborhood. I would argue both are equally important. You have to have a strong local communities because if you're just, that's completely neglect, then it's not going to be a nice place to live. It's striking that right balance. But for the roadmap, that's really like this underlying premise is, okay, yes, now there's just a directory view today. In the next couple months, early alpha here, it'll be, we're going to have a, like an events feature where for the host ability, they'll be able to say, I only want this event that I'm posting that's going to show up on the globe in our app, like to be shown by uh, available for folks from community X, Y, or Z, or only available for CryptoPunks or Orange Dow or some combination or the entire city, right? It's up to them. So it's almost like giving that modularity of people for hosting both events, we have a hubs feature coming out in Q4, which is actual physical places. And they'll have that modularity to say, hey, this is what I'm offering to the broader community. So it's almost like drawing the connections between those and like many to many networks that then go into events spaces. And then in the long run, also capital as well. So actually being able to crowdfund assets, people that you already know, which almost in a way kind of de-risks, de-risks the transaction in a lot, or even adds a premium, right? There's a lot of platforms today that they, yes, you can fractionalize property, fractionalize ownership of things, but you don't know who you're transacting with. And so I think the cool thing that we're in now where you have these internet communities that can crowdfund together, it adds a premium to the property or whatever the asset is that, that they can, that they can really feel part of. So all that to say, what this looks like logistically is what I mentioned, each city being its own DAO ecosystem fund. And there's four buckets that each ecosystem fund will be able to invest into. It's startups, small businesses, real estate, and then a bucket. And each DAO, each like city community would actually have to propose to the broader like global meta DAO, which, how much percent they want to allocate to each bucket. But that DAO will be its own entity that owns, owns those assets, like almost view the, view the multi-sig almost as like the MV minimum viable city council in a way, right? Like a multi-sig can be that if you have the right people in it, like you can do some pretty powerful stuff. So I was just recently with the head of innovation at this community college. All of a sudden they're all talking about digital cities. And so how might what you're doing relate to digital cities? Because I think if you ride the coattails of what's already taking place there and let them know that this is the infrastructure to that perhaps, or another layer to that. So have you thought about that much and how does it relate? So yes, so absolutely. And we are already proactively. So Build Republic is this kind of software infrastructure layer. What is also working in parallel with us is our partners that we are all actually vested together, just the way we've structured everything. There is a real estate, like a real a standalone real estate entity that actually will be able to come in and help with any real estate deals in the area. There's a venture fund that actually will 
also come in and be like, hey, this is a small town. There's some cool projects and be able to invest capital from that, from that fund. And then there's actually a services arm. And this is where, so there's three people on the founding team, but again, we're all core contributors. His arm is basically like a community engagement services piece that we're actually like contract with governments, local city governments to kickstart and basically not only kickstart, but like seed and scale startup ecosystems in specifically smaller towns or overlooked towns or emerging startup ecosystems right now, primarily focused in the US. And that's like the community before concrete thesis, right? If you can get a town's activity and typically it's like a two year lead up time of, of community engagement and like surfacing the different projects people are working on, making the different connections. And once you have that built, the real estate is already activated automatically, right? So our blueprint ecosystem is actually in a small town in Northern Idaho called Coeur d'Alene. It used to be an old logging industry, right? And so our co-founder literally did our thesis offline first for the last decade. So he built a community around innovation, right? Like weekly meetups, one people became two, two became five, five became 20. Eventually there's this critical mass that he was able to get the local investors in that town to go in on an old Elks Lodge. So if you go to Coeur d'Alene, anybody's listening, feel free to reach out. You have access to the space and we can get you in and get you the whole tour. But on day one, there's 100% occupancy, right? Because the community was already built in and extremely high retention cohort, like a tenant base, because they're already like, all the activity was already happening. So we engage mayoral offices and like city governments that's just in Brooksville, Florida a week ago around not necessarily always blockchain. Like we actually try to strip away a lot of the Web3 and crypto stuff from our protocol, but nothing that we're doing I think is possible without that infrastructure on the back end. But we'll engage them on, hey, what is the economic theme here that can be revitalized or even just initiated based on the historical economy of the region, where they're at today and where it could be going tomorrow. So you've purchased land on chain and received rent from it. So I'd love to hear about that process, how that's currently operating. So I'll quote my co-founder has also said about this concept of wolves, not unicorns, where there's this kind of culture of, oh, let's go try to be all the shiny unicorn. And like, that's fine. That's cool if that happens. But there is a... I think, and I think you see this more in Web3 and Greg Eisenberg actually has a really good thread on this recently about this kind of rise of talk about solo, solopreneurs, just small, now AI enhanced venture studios where you just kind of have these small orgs and you see this like Dow to Dow interaction as well, where there's just like a lot of like a pack of, Hey, let's all take down bits and pieces of this bigger puzzle. And so one of the other partners that we we're working with in that same kind of vein and where I think about this a lot, we just have a lot of fun orgs that we work with. It's called CougarDAO. And CougarDAO is a LexDAO spinoff. And LexDAO is basically a DAO of lawyers and smart contract engineers and accountants and basically everyone you would want to work with to purchase land on chain and go forward with that kind of stuff. So Build is basically, basically had some R&D budget to get, just put in there to be like, hey, let's, what does this look like to buy land on chain? We were originally going to, there was a, an island in Idaho that was going to be up for sale called Cougar Island. And the typical bull market island, island buying spree that every crypto Twitter, crypto Twitter was all into. We were like, let's figure that out. The auction's coming up. And then when the auction came up, it was like 12 million bucks. Okay. We still fundamentally want to see how to purchase land on chain, right? This is, this was always the, the, the meat of the experiment. But yeah, so then went back to the drawing board and just be like, okay, let's just do this first. So we bought a, there was a 160 acres in Northeast Colorado on auction for, I think it was like just under two, it was like about 170 grand. And which is also crazy to me that you can buy that much farmland for 170 grand. But uh, so we essentially cloud funded it or put in the contract on Cali Dow, which is another Lex Dow spinoff, just Dow, like very legally compliant Dow infrastructure that you can use, crowdsource that contract. 
did all the on-chain proposals of, hey, this is how we're going to do it. It's an LLC. And then we had to do, obviously, some of the more manual pieces of actually getting somebody or some representative to sign the, the deed transfer and everything else. But we went through all those mechanics to purchase that land as Cougar Dow. And then, and then, so now it's probably, there's a lot, there's more and more RWA platforms coming up like Fabrica is a cool one that we also own a piece of one acre in Cochise, Arizona. Now that's part of the Dow, which is cool, but I don't know what we're going to do with it. We're like putting some dome on it and putting on an Airbnb. I don't know yet, but, but it's what we've really just gone through the muscle memory of, okay, what does it look like? Sure. There's going to be platforms that like allow you to crowdfund more places. Lofty is one interesting one rootstock on chain, but nobody really th- I don't, we don't see a lot of people talking about what does it look like to manage the property on chain, right? Like the property management of potentially double, even triple digit number of people who like all have a vested interest in the property. And it's one thing to crowdfund a property, but what about when something breaks? Who's putting the money in? How does those share transfers work? That was always the the nature of that experiment. And so we're learning a lot for build that we can then take that module and then basically use that for, for future kind of some of our future 18 to 24 month plans where we want to actually be able to facilitate crowdfunding a property and collect rent from it. So yeah, we collected our share of the rent the other day from the tenant check. I went out to go meet the tenant in Northeast Colorado. He's a farmer that had a lot more acreage than just the plot. We chatted for the better half of the afternoon. There was some, even some interesting things that I got from that conversation that like, like seeing this intersection of crypto and real world assets, like in a way we are like a alternative financing option for him. Maybe if he wants to buy a future plot where it's like, he's, I think a lot of farmers typically like debt averse. And so it's kind of, oh yeah, I could go lever up more and go buy more land or I can ping my freaking internet cheerleader friends to like just sell their sh- their whatever fucking jpeg they just bought and uh, sorry for the curse and then buy more property which is at least we think way more interesting and as long as no one's trying to micromanage a farm that we know nothing about farming if you told me to go buy a farm to tomorrow outside of the scope of how we did it like manually go find a network find a broker go to the bank i like i wouldn't know how to do it but like now i know a lot more about real estate just through that to these, our internet friends. So yeah, so that was the nature of that experiment. And then, yeah, we're going to continue to do more of those proofs of concepts and then start bringing that kind of more as like a module in-house for build cities. So are you envisioning the capital? You talked a little bit about capital and that being potentially a VC arm, that being a meta DAO and then individual city DAOs. How are you envisioning capital being distributed or even flowing? So... I'll go ahead and sequence your chronological order. So as of today, we are a software company, just like a typical C core, like creating this protocol, still top of the first inning. We are fundraising. And so happy to chat with anybody about about that after. But so that's just to get the pieces together, right? We have a feature called Dreams. And it's a it's an NFT collection that uses collaborative prompt engineering. So everybody has the ability to add or replace three words in a prompt collectively. And then that generates an image that you can then mint as a dream. And we got, and so we're going to have a Genesis edition of about a hundred of those to start. And this will be kind of like the first, first, or actually, sorry, we have the real estate revenue, digital assets. So this will be the third revenue stream for us where 90% of those proceeds, and we got a lot of inspiration from now and now for this, 90% of those proceeds will go to this, basically we call it the galactic treasury layer or global treasury layer. And then cities will be able to request funds from that from that chapter. So very much like Nouns DAO. So people who hold the dreams will be able to vote on which cities it gets distributed to. 10% goes to the C core so that we can keep the lights on. But that'll be the main thing. So all membership sales that we see going forward, first it's dreams. Next, when we add like more physical space access, that'll be like a resident layer. And then the final layer will be more like citizen. But anyways, all of those funds will be coming into that uh, kind of global layer and then, and then distributed down based on the activity of the cities that are requesting funds. And then 
we will do that in basically like a non-dilutive, like non-equity based manner to just iron out and just make sure everything's working. And then basically once we have that right, again, all future like membership sales, any revenue activities from the global build infrastructure will be able to get requested for the ecosystem funds themselves. How about the other way around? So you and I, we're in Constellation DAO together. There's a lot of change right now. And we've talked a lot about an initiative-based kind of DAO sub DAO structure, which sounds quite similar. But then I imagine each city DAO will potentially have their own yes. revenue drivers, which might be quite yes. different. Are you coupling those together? We're thinking of each city fund, like even if we're a quarter unsuccessful as Nouns DAO, like that's 10 city funds that you could have with a million piece to deploy into those local ecosystems. But what we're going to set up, and again, a lot of these are just loose details right now and we're still solidifying it, but what we view be the relationship between the global layer and the city layer is that there would be a standard deal. So while all revenue activities would be coming into the global layer, there would be a standard deal of, hey, X amount for Y percent of that fund. And then that local fund has the ability to raise external capital in their own area, like basically offline. So we're going to delegate the administration of that fund, including they're going to be mainly responsible for that. And then they will be borrowing from our resources, borrowing from the brand, being able to like cross collaborate with the general ecosystem. But they, the choice of what they want to do outside of that standard deal is up to them. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I just wondered if there was a requirement for a chapter, so to speak, to give back. To yeah, the global so whatever, however we finally pencil in what that standard agreement is, the returns from that, from that fund would go towards this, this global meta layer and then get distributed to all the token holders. So you could be a, you could be, if you're a patron in Perth, Australia, and you have visibility and equity into the build Laos fund, then you would be subject to the same dividends from that, from that fund. And again, not a lawyer, not forward looking statements, more details to be ironed out. Yeah. So. I want to go back to something you touched on. You said you are fundraising. And when I looked at your deck, one thing which just jumps right out at you, we have mentioned his name a couple of times, which is the godfather <laughs> of the network state. How did you guys get in touch with him? How did he become an investor? Yeah, yeah, we are fundraising now. It's an open round. We actually designed the round to be community first financing. Again, I'm not a lawyer. There are particulars to this that I need to defer to the documents, but basically, Anybody in the world, essentially, like it's a Reg S filing and a Reg D 506C. So it's open to international investors, even if they're unaccredited. In the US, there is an accreditation requirement, but, uh, and we did that by design. So that biology is actually on the same terms as we've had people from just all over the world that not necessarily in startups, but they like what we're doing. And we've set the minimums pretty low so that it's economically accessible as well. And then to answer your question directly, yeah, I think biology has a, uh, Sometimes I wonder if he's got like a, like some script he set up maybe through Zapier and just like any network state stuff or mention or startup city stuff. Like I think he's got like a, a pulse on and it was, he's actually quite a responsive person. I don't know, if we maybe got lucky or whatnot, but all things considered with the clout that he has, I think he, he really makes a genuine effort to try to engage as many folks as possible on, you know, on what they're working on. Yeah. So let's think like big picture. What's the craziest idea that you think should be a DAO or could be a DAO in the future. And like you were just earlier in the show going off about one in particular where there was the farmer that could use this as like a function to get funding oh, yeah. maybe for another piece of land. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Literally because of that interaction, I've been thinking a lot more of the concept of digital credit unions because there's, there's 15,000 credit unions in the US actually, right? And for folks like like him and a lot of others, you cannot, you can try as hard as you want, but you'll never be able to fully, like the farther away you go from some level of face-to-face -face interaction, the harder things get to be, you know, be able to underwrite, right? Like in-person, in-person-ness or that attribute is trust, right? And that's like literally why a lot of these credit unions exist. They're able to underwrite these businesses a lot better. But imagine if like they were amplified by, okay, here's the local credit union for this particular type of crop in this particular type of region. 
and imagine that as like a digital kind of supercharger where it's like, hey, here's all the people who know about this specific type of agriculture in the world around all parts of the world that can also pool their capital and, and essentially be like a digital credit union. So you can imagine, hey, I have a freaking, I'm opening up a music studio business or whatever. And, and I could go to a website where you could essentially tap a DAO or digital credit union who all know about that kind of industry. So that's exciting to me from a pragmatic one. And then the other crazy things, I've always personally wanted to start a, and I don't know, personally, I just want to see it happen. I think it actually already has been, but like a race team, like a full on, imagine maybe the season seven of Drive to Survive or season, I don't know, whatever, whenever it happens, season 12, it's like, there's these Mercedes and Ferrari. And then it's, you were mentioning little Dogecoin, like that's a quarter billion dollar market cap. Like what if they all just became little Dogecoin F1 team? <laughs> like, I think that would be awesome to see personally, but crazy and maybe not realistic. And I think, you know, I think Dow really is just a type of structure that it's just another, it's just another tool, right? I would never want FEMA to necessarily be a Dow or a Boeing assembly line to be a Dow. You want you, it's a board of directors, sure, but certain orgs just, it doesn't pan out. Those are amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> a recurring question we like is similar to the crazy ideas, and that's where are we going with DAOs, right? What is like the 10x, 100x kind of vision of the future? Why is this important? What do you think? Yeah. So there's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot to unpack here, right? You have to look at this also as far as like the economic, political, social, cultural aspects of what I've seen. Our co-founder brings the story up a lot about how he was at a time and place and he was observing something with Occupy Wall Street. And it's not, I think he was like, he didn't, it wasn't like taking a side. He just like observed, okay, something about capitalism isn't really working. Something needs to maybe change, but it was, it was a process. So it was a, it was the initial emotional kind of ventilation of something's not working, right? I think the 2.0 of that was Wall Street bets. And it was Occupy Wall Street with skin in the game or blood on the line, or not blood, but like financial pain. And I think crypto has always been that kind of undercurrent, but the Wall Street bets was a big story. But it's the same thing, right? If we talk about subreddit, DAO is like a subreddit with a bank account. Like that's literally what that is. And because a lot of crypto and DAOs, this is like the legit infrastructure of the, of the future, at least I believe, and I imagine a lot of listeners on the show believe, it's still early innings and kind of evergreen pastures, right? I've talked to DAO founders who are just, you name any given big company today and it's were this DAO to disrupt that basically. So we're thinking obviously a lot about real estate, right? We joked on the farm. <laughs> we joked about the farm purchase. Watch out, Bill Gates. Like we got the people's farm now, right? <laughs> but all that to say, yeah, it's an evergreen opportunity. Before I forget, let me ask one more question. And that is, how do people get in touch with you guys? How do you people get involved with Build? today. Yeah. You can check us out at buildcities.network and you can press launch and actually go into the app. And I will say the app is designed for the communities that you're already a part of. We have our own internal network, our own internal telegram discord, basically, but, but definitely check out the app. That'd be the biggest thing to, to check out first. You'll probably find folks from communities you're already a part of. And if not, you can be the first and see who else is in your city. So check that out. Our Twitter is at Build Cities. Our DMs are open. I'm on the Discord as well. So you can reach out anytime. Very responsive there. And then, yeah, I really just want to give a shout out to this all started with an idea. And none of this would be possible without the contributors that we have come in fully organically over time to see what we're doing with the vision and especially for the ones who are actually contributing, whether that be development, design, ecosystem building even without a kind of fully fleshed out concept, because I truly believe that this is really, it's got to be, everybody has to have their own piece of the vision, right? If you ask anybody what their city means to them, the city that they live in, you're going to get a different answer. 
And we want to best express that or allow for that level of expressiveness. All right. Thanks again, guys. This was super fun. Thank you so much for coming on the show. And I hope you Thank enjoy you so much. Time. Thank you. Yeah. And that's a wrap. Spin and Solve are your host for Dow Deep Dives, a podcast about all things Dow. Thanks for tuning in. Till next time.